This is Paxton Lynch. Paxton Lynch was a first round pick in the 2016 NFL Draft selected by the Denver Broncos. He played with the Broncos for two seasons before ultimately being released. And he has not played a regular season snap since he got released by the Broncos. What happened to Paxton Lynch? Before I can talk about Paxton Lynch and his NFL career so far, I'm going to kick it all the way back to Trinity Christian Academy in Deltona, Florida, where Paxton made a name for himself early on. While at Trinity Christian Academy, Paxton Lynch played football and basketball. Despite Paxton Lynch being a 6'5 high schooler, he actually did a lot of his damage on the football field. Now, it's kind of hard to find high school stats on Paxton Lynch, but in his career, he had 2,099 passing yards, and as a junior, according to Max Preps, he threw for 1,082 yards with 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, and he only completed 52% of his passes, and on the ground, he rushed for 407 yards with a very impressive 16 touchdowns. Paxton Lynch, as a recruit in the class of 2012, he did not get many offers, and not many teams had him on their radar. He only had two Division I offers. One from Memphis, which is an FBS school, and one from Florida A&M, which is an FCS school. He would commit to Memphis. According to 247 Sports, he was a two-star recruit and ranked as the 1,894th best player in the nation and the 84th best pro-style quarterback and the 265th best player in the state of Florida for the 2012 class. For the 2012 college football season with Memphis, Paxton Lynch would actually redshirt. Now, before I talk about Paxton Lynch at Memphis and his career, I want to provide some background context before his first true year as a starting quarterback. From 2001 to 2012, in that time span where Paxton Lynch wasn't playing for Memphis, Memphis was really sorry. They only made five bowl games, and they only won two of them. They had some pretty decent, mediocre years, but they had some very, very bad years as well, like 3-9 in 2002, 2006, they were 2-10, and, and the years leading up to Paxton Lynch were really bad. 2009, 2-10. 2010, 1 and 11, 2011, 2 and 10, and 2012, the year that Paxton Lynch redshirted, 4 and 8. What I'm basically trying to show here is the environment that Paxton Lynch was in going into the 2013 college football season where he was the starting quarterback for Memphis. You know, he inherited a losing program, and I think you're going to like what happened when he's done at Memphis. In the 2013 college football season for Memphis, Paxton Lynch as a redshirt freshman started all 12 games to the Memphis Tigers. But the first year starting college quarterback Paxton Lynch struggled along with the team. Paxton Lynch completed only 58% of his passes, only threw for 2,056 yards, had 9 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. But the thing about the 2013 Memphis Tigers football team was that they're the 98th best team in the nation to finish off the year after going 3-9 and nine and going 1-7 and seven in conference play. But something worth noting is that that Memphis team had one of the worst, and I mean one of the worst in all of college football that season in scoring. They were ranked 111th that year for scoring the ball in offense. They only averaged 19.5 points a game which was very bottom tier in the league. In Paxton Lynch's redshirt sophomore year with Memphis in the 2014 college football season, he did a complete 180. He did very well, especially after struggling so much his freshman season. He completed 63% of his passes, throwing for 3,031 yards with 22 touchdowns and nine interceptions, not to mention he had 13 touchdowns on the ground that season as well. Not to mention, he led Memphis to their first ever 10-win season in school history and to their first bowl game since 2008. And it's also worth noting that they finished in the top 25, ranked as the 25th best team in the nation. In his redshirt junior season at Memphis in the 2015 college football season, he improved even more from the season prior, and he played extremely well. He completed 67% of his passes while throwing for a very impressive 3,776 yards with 28 touchdowns and 4 interceptions, but his ground game did go down a bit as he only had 2 rushing touchdowns this season. 
Memphis as a team this season performed pretty much at the same pace as last year. They had the same regular season record of 9-3, but they did lose their bowl game to finish 9-4. And the team was still really good, but in in-conference play, they did struggle a bit. Three of their losses did come from in-conference play, but the team stayed pretty consistent. After the 2015 college football season, Paxton Lynch would declare for the 2016 NFL Draft. Going into the 2016 NFL Draft, Paxton Lynch was seen as one of the top quarterbacks in that class, ranked as the third best quarterback in that class by many, many scouts and draft analysis people. And going into the draft, he was also projected to be a first round pick. In the 2016 NFL Draft, Paxton Lynch was drafted with the 26th overall pick by the Denver Broncos. And he was actually the third quarterback selected in that draft behind quarterbacks like Jared Goff and Carson Wentz. Even though Paxton Lynch was going to a Denver Broncos team that just lost Peyton Manning, he would not be the starting quarterback in the beginning of the season. To start the 2016 NFL season for the Denver Broncos, Paxton Lynch was actually a backup quarterback to Trevor Simeon, and he only really saw playing time anytime Trevor Simeon got knocked down with injury. For his rookie season, Lynch would only appear in three games, and he did start in two of them. He was 1-1 one one as a starting quarterback. He completed 59% of his passes, throwing for 497 yards with two touchdowns and one interception and he did have one touchdown on the ground as well. Going into his second year in the NFL in the 2017 NFL season, Paxton Lynch suffered a shoulder injury versus the Green Bay Packers in the third preseason game of that year. Paxton Lynch would return back from injury in week 11, but he was a backup to Brock Osweiler, but he would get a start in the week 12 game versus the Oakland Raiders. But unfortunately for Paxton Lynch, in his first start back with the team, he got hurt in the third quarter of that Raiders game and he would miss two to four weeks, but he would start in the final game of the season versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Now let's talk about his numbers for that season. For Paxton Lynch's second year in the NFL, as I just explained, he dealed with the injury bug quite a bit this season, especially when he was healthy, he always seemed to get hurt almost immediately, but he appeared in two games and started in two of them. He went 0-2 as a starter, but he did complete 67% of his passes through for 295 yards with two touchdowns and three interceptions. But changes were going to be made for the Broncos as this was their second straight losing season. The Denver Broncos would get Case Keenum, which made Paxton Lynch a backup for the third year in a row, but he would eventually be demoted to the third string quarterback behind Chad Kelly and Case Keenum, but he was released on September 2nd, 2018 after the team acquired Kevin Hogan. In the two seasons with the team, Lynch made just four starts. And he threw a total of four touchdowns and four interceptions. Paxton Lynch would not play for a single team in the 2018 NFL season, not even on the practice squad. But on January 17, 2019, Lynch signed with the Seattle Seahawks. But the Seattle Seahawks dream was very short-lived as he was cut on August 30th, 2019 during the final roster cuts. But Lynch would soon be picked up by the Pittsburgh Steelers on September 17th, 2019 and he would be a part of the Steelers practice squad, but he would eventually be promoted to the active roster on October 11th, 2019, after Mace Rudolph got an injury. For the second year in a row, Paxton Lynch would not appear in a single regular season NFL game yet again. Now in 2020, Paxton Lynch is still with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he is currently fighting for a final roster spot with the Steelers. My prediction for Paxton Lynch for, with the Steelers or in this upcoming season is that he'll be put on the practice squad with the Steelers or he'll be waived and picked up by another team and put on their practice squad. I say that because he doesn't have the opportunity to show off his skills in the preseason and I don't see the Steelers getting rid of Mason Rudolph and Devlin Hodges anytime soon because they seem like they kind of like those two as a backup quarterback to Ben Roethlisberger. Honestly, we could see Paxton Lynch on the active roster for the Steelers. It could happen. I could see him as a third string quarterback for them if he can take out Devlin Hodges or maybe even Mason Rudolph if he can somehow do that. I know it's unlikely, but it can happen. He just needs the opportunity to take it and strive. But the thing is, he might be on the practice squad in my mind because 
they the Steelers need a quarterback on the practice squad because if Big Ben gets hurt, they need that depth because as if you saw any of the games last year that the Steelers had, you could see when Big Ben went down, the Steelers offense was kind of bad. Mason Rudolph and Devlin Hodges are not getting the job done for them, and they just need some more options in that backup quarterback spot if he does go down this season. Basically, what I see what went wrong in Paxton Lynch's career so far is that the injury bug definitely did not help him in a season he needed to show out the most in, especially when all the quarterbacks for the Broncos in the 2017 NFL season were struggling. He was hurt, and he couldn't really show off his talents and his rookie season. He wasn't really ready to be a starter, and he just was never able to compete for a starting spot. He was a backup most of his career so far, and he's never been able to really compete for that starting spot like he's supposed to as a first-round pick. But the thing with Paxton Lynch, it just seems like he isn't able to compete in a system because, I mean, he got cut going into his third NFL season. And he was a backup to Chad Kelly and Case Keenum, which eventually got him cut because he just wasn't good enough to be on the team. I mean, the guy does have potential, but will we actually ever see the potential that he showed going into the draft? The potential he showed at Memphis? I mean, if you think about it, he basically helped start up the Memphis dynasty they have going a little bit right now. I'm not saying that Memphis is a dynasty, but like this is some of the best years Memphis has had in football in forever. My prediction for Paxton Lynch's career is that he's going to be a backup the rest of his career. He might be given one more opportunity to compete for a starting job, but I don't know if he can do it. Like, I truly do not know if he'll be able to do it, and if he's a starter, I don't know how he's going to play. He might play really bad, but I think it's safe to say, unless he just goes beast mode in the rest of his career, he's going to have that big, 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 all caps, bust letter over his head which is very very unfortunate for a guy who seems so talented in college well if you guys like the video remember to smash that like button turn on them post notifications and subscribe for more videos b kelly out